The crystal light is shipping, and more and more users worldwide are getting their crystal VR experience with it. This also means that, thanks to our user feedback, we can further optimize its performance through software. One of such aspects is the tracking. Let's take a deep dive. First, the crystal light can use two methods of tracking. It can do inside out with four built-in cameras, but you can also slot on a light half faceplate to use space stations. In this video, we talk about the inside out method. We feel this method has a lot of benefits in that you do not need to purchase the base station nor install those. It is just plug and play. For its inside out tracking, the Crystal Light uses the same cameras and controllers as the Crystal. Its hardware is exactly the same and the position of the camera has not changed. What is different though is that the original Crystal handled this via its internal Qualcomm XR2 chip. The Crystal Light has no XR2 chip to save on cost and reduce weight. Now, the headset needs no active cooling. And so, it now offloads the tracking calculation task to the PC. This, however, requires us to port the SLAM algorithm, both for the headset and the controllers, from Qualcomm's Android platform to make it suitable for Windows PC. Developing any SLAM algorithm isn't straightforward because of the workload required. Very few VR headset companies develop this on their own, neither for the headset nor controllers. Pimax is one of the few. We think that having this core technology internally is a huge benefit. So we are more in control of development and production. It gives us a wider range of components we can choose from, so we can build exactly the headset in the way we want to, in terms of performance and price. That is not just for the Crystal Light, but also for the future headsets, such as the Super. Right now, the tracking performance meets the demands of most users in normal use cases. But with the headset shipping to more customers, we also encounter with more situations that we did not encounter before with our internal and beta testing team. Think about light flickering at different frequency, moving objects, and reflective surfaces. We are now fast accumulating more user feedback, allowing us to make software iterations. All these improvements can be brought to you with firmware updates delivered over the air. Uh, during this week, I worked closely with uh, Pimax Crystal Technicians and uh, to solve these issues and they were very active to solve that, very involved and uh, that's a pleasure to see that. Let's closely look at four key aspects, two of which you can control, two of which we are working hard on it. First, the CPU usage. Because the Crystal Light offloads the tracking calculation to the computer, the CPU is used. In some situations, the CPU does not have enough resources available. You can help this by cleaning up your system and close programs you don't need, especially those run in the background. If, for example, your antivirus program starts to do a background scan while you're running a VR application, the CPU runs low on available capacity, causing tracking issues with the headset because the computer cannot tell the headset fast enough how to mimic your movements inside the application. The tracking algorithm needs to work extremely fast Otherwise, the user will perceive motion sickness. We are working on this though. We are working on optimizing the efficiency of our algorithm. For instance, by letting it only track key areas and reducing the interval of areas where it is not required. This won't improve tracking in itself, but it will reduce computational resources needed from the CPU and thus prevent bottlenecks. Secondly is the USB connection. We discovered that some of USB ports do not provide a stable connection. We recommend all users to use a USB 3.0 slot. These are either blue or marked with a label. If you have multiple USB 3.0 slots, please try them all. If the quality of the slot isn't optimal, the tracking data will be less stable. The third reason is the environment. This is another factor you can control. Some rooms, well, they refuse the algorithm of the headset. Let's categorize this. First, your room can be too empty. Sometimes the headset cannot find a distinguishable location on white walls. If so, for instance, you can put posters or plants in your room. Secondly, are reflective surfaces. If your floor reflects light, close the curtains or put down a carpet. We also had several users who had a massive mirror in their room. This does not work well with this method of tracking. Third is the lighting condition. If the sunlight coming in is extremely bright or the room is extremely dark, the algorithm cannot pick up the location correctly. The controllers are tracked in relation to the headset with infrared lights. But the headset itself tracks itself with normal cameras in relation to the environment. 
This requires proper lighting conditions. Lastly, are moving objects. This complicates the tracking of a static environment. For instance, if you have a large curtains that move in the wind because you open the window, they will confuse the headset. Likewise, if moving objects are shown on your monitor, such as your VR application, then the headset can be confused. This is especially true if you are super close to your monitor or if you are using an ultra-wide monitor. Then the fourth, the algorithm itself. We are still fine-tuning this. We can show a bit on how it works here. Here are four camera outputs. The red, green, blue and yellow dots are identified as different objects. This is turned into a 3D scan of your room or rather how the headset sees your room and how you move in it. This is then used to track your head movements. We can also use the camera feed to show an issue we recently fixed. The frequency of AC power varies in each country, which causes light to flicker at different frequency. The algorithm has to adjust its frame rate to capture the area in full detail. This caused some issues previously when the frequency of the light was extremely low. This is before the fix and this is the after. We are still improving our algorithm testing and refining it in more different room and light configurations, as well as different countries. We are also working on deep learning to better identify objects. All of this will increase the precision of the tracking. So if you've got a Pimax crystal light and you feel the tracking isn't optimal, please hang on. It will come as an OTA update. We are working on it.